Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Hope you've been able to do some races of late. I've, I'm still recovering from the London Marathon, I think. But so I've been out last few weeks and done about 50 miles. So I'm starting to think about what are my next targets. Potentially thinking about whether I should do the Boston Marathon. A couple of my friends have indicated they're quite keen. So um, entries open next month and I've got a Boston qualifier. So that might be an option. So also this time of year, I sort of like reflect on how the season's gone, which races went well, and spend a lot of time on Strava looking at my own stats and other people's. So for today, I do a bit of a, a video on analysis of some of my own stats and see how they compare to some other YouTubers and good athletes to see what's what and see what we can learn. So let's hop over to the computer and have a quick look. Okay, so this is a summary of the years that I did a marathon in. My PB marathon, 233.53, came in 2005. Just about had a Garmin by then. It was a bit unreliable, but I managed to salvage some sort of data from it. And then I looked at the other years I did a marathon. 2016, I did a 253. And then in early 2020, I did a 256. So I've called that 2019 as well. And this year, I did a 309. So I looked at what was my average weekly mileage in each of these years and for the 233 PB I did 73 miles per week on average this was actually in a six month period I didn't really have data for the full year these other averages are for the full year so that doesn't necessarily include the time I was actually marathon training but you can see that other than that year when I did very well my average training per week in the last sort of five or six years has been very similar around about 45 average and that equates to a time of about five or six hours per week. Whereas when I was really a bit younger and a bit uh, keener, I got up to nine hours a week. I've also done a bit of biking. Some years I did more biking than others. Um, in these particular years, because I was marathon training, I wasn't doing a lot, but enough in some of these years to actually register a whole hour per week on average over the year. And you can see that as I've got older, obviously my times have got slower. But interestingly, what I thought as a rule of thumb is that what is my average training pace compared to my marathon performance in my 5K? I also thought for me that the difference between my average training pace and my marathon pace, my marathon pace would be a minute faster. And then for the 5K, my 5K would be approximately two minutes faster. So I looked on the internet to see if I could find any data on this. And Fetch Everyone is a very good site. It's got some good articles on it. And I think they have a training system so people can load up their training and the, the fetch guy can actually then compare what training data they've got against people's PB. So you come up with this very interesting graph, which is actually for the marathon. So this is your race pace here. So six minute miling was basically more or less my 233. And then in recent years, I've been, I've been more or less more, you know, seven minute miling a bit under for a sub three, but more or less. So here in 2005, I was on this line, and in 2016, I was on this line. Now, both times here is about a minute difference, which actually is very similar to what I'm seeing in my data. And you can say definitely the average there is about a minute. And then for 5K, it doesn't have data on that, but I can see that my data there is two minutes. If we just look again at this graph, so we can see here that if you're about a six minute miler for the marathon down to about sort of a 7.30, so basically anyone sort of like, you know, like three hours, 15 or less, the difference between your average training pace and your race pace seems to be on average about a minute. But as you get slower, that gap actually reduces so if you're an eight minute miler which is about 330 you're down to about 40 seconds there and if you go down to a, like a four hour marathon it's about 30 seconds and then at 10 minute mile pace which is about 430 or so you might even find that your average training pace is actually quicker than your race pace I think the reason for that is is that when you're taking four plus hours to the marathon then if you go out for your training runs that's most of them are going to be considerably less than the time you're going to be racing for so you're not perhaps sort of training yourself optimally to to run for that length of time i mean it almost becomes what for the elite athletes would become like an ultra race i mean you've got elite athletes could cover 100k in six hours so you know it's, it's a completely different complexion on the race so I thought, well, how does that actually compare to other people? So I did a bit of trawl of Strava and so see what I can come up with. So I've sorted this graph by the difference between person's average training time and their marathon difference. So the biggest difference of anybody 
in these people which is some of them these people you might know i put in brackets afterwards uh, who they are some of them you might know some of the more people that i know personally a bit for instance michael young terry booth these are people like richard mcbow these Oli garrod these are people that aren't necessarily famous in inverted commas but i know them quite well and they're very very good runners and there's also people that you probably would have heard of because they're YouTubers or they're elite athletes like Stephanie Davis, who's the first British female in, in the Olympics. Uh, Sester Moore, of course, who's a very good runner and uh, a YouTuber, of course. And uh, you've got people like Ben Parks, who are also good athletes, but also pretty, perhaps better known as YouTubers. And then you've got some top Masters athletes in my category. Jonathan Walton is the fastest M50 in the country at the marathon. Terry Booths is one of the fastest at 5,000. And he comes from around my way. Jake Smith there, he was the fastest marathon runner this year at 2.11. So if we see... Stephen Cousins has got the biggest differential. That's principally because he's more of an ultra runner. So his average training pace, even though he's done a sub three marathon in the last year, is actually ridiculously slow at 11.23. I think half of that was running up the side of a mountain in the Pyrenees or somewhere. And he does an awful lot of runs on Zwift at very, very high incline. But you also can see that he trains for an awful lot of time duration wise so of all the people he actually trains the most in duration more than elite athletes in fact although his average weekly mileage is only 68 so he's a bit of an outlier there but it just shows that different approaches can work for different people but what's quite clear is that most people are around the minute mark as in the graph if they're sort of sub three marathon runners or there or thereabouts stephen cousins his wife victoria she did an excellent pb in the paris marathon recently and but you can see that her marathon difference is very similar to to mine there when i did my 233 almost identical matt reese is another one there all's all in and his differential is again very similar same with Jake Smith. He's, Jake Smith is probably the person that sort of trains the fastest of these people. We'll do a listing of that there in a minute. But if I scroll down a bit more to some of the other people at the other end. So Andy Greenleaf, he's a very good runner. He did 228 in London this year. But he only trained for 28 miles on average. So I think understandably because of that his average pace there is 611 so he was having to do his training at really really high level to be able to sort of even get around and you can see this very good runner because he's got a 1504 5k based on that level of training some of these people like ben lotley he that was his first marathon he did very well but you can see that his difference between his training pace there and his marathon pace isn't too much 34 seconds which goes to show what i'm saying and then someone like Andy Rayner and Lee Kibble, they train with Chris Bird, and Chris Bird's got quite a sort of a relatively low mileage, high intensity kind of, of approach. So Andy's averaging 49 miles per week for the year, and Lee's almost the same at 46, which is a good average, but it's not like you know the 100 miles plus that you would see elite athletes typically do. And so they're running average paces, which are in fact quicker than some of the elite athletes are doing phil seisman for instance who was the first britain home in the london marathon has got an average training pace of 653 but having said that his 653 is based on doing 90 miles a week so understandably the more miles you do the lower your average training pace is going to be another one with a very high mileage there is michael young who won the recent chester marathon in a pb 227 i believe and his mileage there is 97 but his average training pace is only 819 in fact he's actually slower than mine so but he does race a fair bit so when i looked at his power of 10 he kind of makes up for not doing many sessions by racing a lot obviously we can't really tell from just these summary statistics what uh people's training is actually structured that would be a subject of perhaps another video and if you go to the bottom end of the graph here, I'm not trying to sort of call everyone out because everyone is at their own level and needs to do the best they can. But it is, does rather confirm that earlier graph that the people in the sort of the four hour mark are actually training at a faster pace than actually racing the marathon at. 
Um, Ed Budd's in now. I did, Ed Budd hasn't actually done a race, but he, um, he did a time trial. So I've used that, and he did his marathon time trial at almost exactly the same pace he, as his average training pace. So I think that probably shows for Ed he could probably actually go a lot quicker than that, what well, he would do without the, um, the broken shoulder. So best wishes to Ed, and I hope you get out there again soon. So that's another view of this data, but this time I've sorted it by the average training pace to see who trains fast and who trains a bit slower. So not surprising in a way, the fastest person I found, obviously this is an exhaustive list, list of athletes in the country, is Jake Smith, who trains at an average pace of 6.07. Now it's a bit misleading because his weekly mileage is only 60, but you see there that he actually adds on an hour a week on, on average on the bike and when I looked at his Strava he does an awful lot of sort of cross training as well which you can't really quantify so I think his actual real training overall is actually a lot more than the 60 miles that 607 suggests so I think that's a, why he can run his training miles faster than some other elite athletes because he's doing all this cross training and biking and you can see here that on my stats his marathon difference is just over a, a minute and his 5k 144 so generally these people are you think well 607 is pretty quick but you gotta have to remember that their 5k pace is around about 430 so 607 for somebody who can run a 430 average pace for three and a bit miles is is comfortable for sure but it would be pretty much flat out for me these days and as I mentioned, Andy Greenleaf, because he's doing low mileage, is probably going to make up for it with running a fast times. And we all mentioned Lee with um, the approach of running quite a high intensity, quite a lot of workouts. But it's clearly working because it's some very impressive times there. 236, huge PB in London and a sub 16 5K. Can't really argue with that. But it's interesting that, you know, somebody who's not really an elite athlete, a very good runner, has actually got an average training pace faster than some of these elite athletes. Like J Jake Rowe, who's got a PB of 13.36 for 5K, very similar to Jake. And he's running an average of 71 miles a week, but he's actually running those at 6.39. So, you know, in terms of his difference between his 5K speed and his average training speed, it's much, very different. And then Stephanie Davis is another interesting one. She has also uh, does an awful lot of biking. In fact, she, if you look at the stats, there, she's actually doing more time on the bike than she's running. So amazingly for a, a marathon runner of Olympic standard, over the whole year so far this year in 2021, she's only averaging 31 miles a week, just three hours of training. But she's doing that at 6.40. But she's adding on four hours of biking uh, it still seems quite a low volume, but maybe she's had a bit of time out after the Olympics. But it just goes to show that you know you can blend in running and cycling. Now, Mark Symes, he's the fastest M50 uh, over 1500 in the UK, and he trains a bit quicker than some other people, an average at 640. In fact, he trains the almost exact average pace as Adam Fogg who's another YouTuber also a sub four miler but notice that the average training mileage is somewhat different Adam Fogg has got a fairly high training load there double the amount of mileage so him running 643s is, is it kind of makes sense because he's running here very similar 5k times these other elites and of course he's got the sub four mile speed as well so his average training pace there is almost three minutes slower than he can run a mile in Dan Jarvis is another 5K runner there of pretty much elite standard. Again, kind of similar, just under seven minute mile pace. And then Andy the runner, Andy the FOD runner, his mileage is somewhat less than the elite athletes, but his training average speed is quite high. And he, uh, I think he hasn't really saw, explored his potential yet at the marathon. He did a very good 244, but I think he's going to be sub 240 when he puts his next marathon training block. And I think that 5K time is subject to revision as well. I think that should be sub, sub 1630 for sure. Phil Seisman, another one we've mentioned that is training, you know, perhaps a bit slower than you might think for someone of that ability. But, uh, you know, he's doing, doing a lot of miles. He's up to 90 miles then you've got Ben Felton. He's another sort of talented YouTuber. He's just gone full-time as a YouTuber. And he's, he's relatively fast, but he's d doing a reasonable amount of miles. I think now he's a full-time athlete. He'll probably be looking to run even more miles than that. Now, Emma Stiles is another one interesting here. She's a 242 marathon runner and a very similar approach to Stephanie Davis. Not doing much running at all, really, in general scheme of things. Only 29 miles a week. 
Uh, very similar, you know, mileage and pace to Stephanie Davis, but she's also doing a lot of biking. In fact, she's even doing more biking. She's doing six hours a week biking. I'm not sure if she's even more of a triathlete, but you can't really argue with a 242. Oli Garrods, um, prolific uh, runner. He seems to run 100 miles a week pretty much on average all year round. So his uh, year average this year is 94, but he also races an awful lot. So I don't think he does too much sort of formal sessions. So his average training pace is probably buoyed up with the number of races he does, but he did a very fine recent 232.23 PB, but he also does ultras. So the fact he's 5k is 15.12 but he also does run on the track as well down to 1500s and miles so yeah some of the if there's a race on he'll all he will do it dave jarrah is another guy i picked out because he's had a big recent improvement to 238 and 1557 in fact his sort of performances there were very similar to what i was doing in, in about 2004 2005 and his training load there was quite similar to me my average training pace there a few rows down was very similar to what dave was doing uh in fact it's like it's literally a second out isn't it so just goes to show that um that approach seems to work now richard mcdowell's another interesting one well he'll one week do 100k ultra and the next week he'll turn out on the track and bomb around it in a 3k or 5k and he i think he was the the second, I think, M40 in London, 223 was just a very small PB, but it's got a huge, excellent 5K as well, 14.33. So it's got a huge range. You can go from running 14.33 5K to winning 100K ultras. And I think his average training mileage this year was a bit less than he has done. I think he has done sort of 100 miles a week in the past. I think he was experimenting with a slightly different approach. And he was telling me that it was more, finding it more difficult to actually run a lot of miles uh, lockdown because he's not doing the commuting. Joseph Gonzalez, another top uh, M50 and someone I know a bit because he lives locally. So again, his training pace now is quite similar to what mine was some 15, 16 years ago when I was somewhat quicker. Richard Ollington, he used to nick a lot of my segments, so I've, I've looked at him with more interest. In fact, he seems to have stopped nicking my segments and, and, and training properly because they did a very fine London there in 224. And uh, he's not running a huge amount of mileage, to be fair. I think he's just really talented. I mean, he's got a bit of speed, clearly, because he's sub 15 for 5k, but only averaging 45 miles for this year. Ben. Parks. I put Ben Parks' 2019 and 2021 because he's had a bit of a, um, a difficult time of late with his um, ankle injury. So I don't think he's, he hasn't actually run a marathon this year or a 5K. So I wanted to see what he did in 2019. And he averaged there 71 miles for the year, at an average pace of 719 when he did a 233, almost identical to me, although he has run a 225 in the past. Um, but his training pace actually this year is almost identical to it was two years ago when he was running these times. So, but although he's doing a lot less miles, so 46, I mean, he's had a few injuries and stuff and time out. So, and he's had um, very bad virus when he missed London. But it's interesting that, you know, he hasn't really changed his average training pace at all. Uh, I think you do get stuck into a uh, um, bit of a groove with these things. Moving down a bit, Spencer Brown hasn't really done any 5Ks or marathons, but, and he doesn't until recently log his training on Strava, but the training he has logged on Strava is mainly his easy and steady runs. A fairly sort of comfortable pace for him, 721 for a sub-4 mile. I think if we added in all his sessions and stuff, it probably would actually look more like about 60, 65 miles a week and probably get that down under a 7-minute pace, so that might be slightly deceptive. Some more YouTubers here. Amrit Pal, very good, 251 in London. He actually overtook me, which is a bit, uh, which I was a bit concerned about at the time when he overtook me, but I hadn't realised that he started a few uh, minutes after me, obviously. But another fine run from him there. Now, Steve Winder's an interesting one. He's a uh, sort of a friend of mine, a local guy, but uh, he seems to be one of these people that actually seems to be getting faster as you get older. I mean, I first uh, started racing about 10 years ago and. Uh, I think over sort of 1500 and under had his measure he was always good at sort of cross country and stuff but he seems to be getting ever faster but on ever faster within even less running so another one that's only doing very limited amount of running only 26 miles of running per week and his average training pace isn't actually that fast he usually used to bomb all those miles so um 
But the big difference there, he's actually doing six hours a week of biking. So his average, tra so his average trailing regime for the whole week is nine hours. So the fact he's only doing three of them on the run means he could still knock out these sort of mid 16 5 Ks. You think, well, oh, Steve has been running, and he'll suddenly turn up for a race and just completely all thrash us all. So <laughs> just shows the different approaches work. Ed Budd here. Now, interesting, Led Budd, um, until he got injured, I think he was almost an identical mileage for me. I thought it was almost in a race to see who could do more miles. So I think I might now nip ahead because Ed's going to have, have to have a few weeks out, unfortunately. But his training at average pace there of 7.45 is um, pretty solid. And I think he can definitely get those times better. I couldn't find a 5K better than 19.53, but I think he's probably going to be more like sub-19 shape, I think, when he gets back into it. Sam Baker running at Man Sam is another YouTuber. I think a uh, bit of a, he admits himself a bit of a bigger guy. So he's very good over 800s. He took to them very well and did a, I think he did a 2.9. I was quite impressed with that. Just taking, coming into the track, you know, without much background. And he recently did the marathon in 3.15, which I think was a fine effort for somebody as big as him. Uh, but he's not actually running a huge amount of mileage. So maybe that's another factor in why his marathon time perhaps isn't reflective of his 5k or his or his shorter races still uh and as you see there his average training pace is 746 and he was only 19 seconds quicker in the marathon but his 5k fits the, like the two minute rule that i had for me chris McEwen, that running guy he was in my video for london now he ran uh his first marathon and i think um he met himself he uh he sort of run walked the second half so i don't think that 339 is at all reflective of his, of, of his ability but he's one of the person here that because of that actually run his av uh, marathon actually slower pace than his average training pace his average training pace is very similar to me uh, i think but his average overall miles for the year is a bit less now Chris Ness is another one that's interesting me because this year he's been beating me and nicking all my club records uh, whereas in the past he hadn't been. Now he runs uh, a very very low amount of mileage only 19 miles per week and he's a bit of a multi um, decathlete so he'll go in for literally these double decathlons. We literally do every single track and field event from like including the 10k, the pole vault, the hammer, the steeplechase, all these things. So he's basically good at everything uh, <laughs> but I think also the these stats belie the fact that he does quite a lot of strength work as well so interesting in his 5k time was identical to me 1827 so his average training pace even though he's only doing 19 miles a week isn't that fast i think basically what he does he blends the odd track session with the odd sort of slow sort of off-road run so that sort of pulls down his average to quite low one but i think when he does train hard it's like doing say 200 meter reps on the track and he races as well um, but yeah, I was trying to find them out how he, how he kept beating me. So I think it just shows that different approaches work. And perhaps also the fact it's a bit like how I used to approach things when I was younger. He was probably quite fresh for a lot of the races, whereas I've sort of, of course, come into these things quite tired. And you see that his average training pace here is almost identical to Michael Young that I mentioned earlier, who's a very prolific runner uh, in terms of marathons, 227, I say, recent PB. His 5K isn't perhaps quite as good, but he's definitely targeting the marathon. And this approach here of very high mileage, uh, mostly comfortable pace is clearly working for him. Michael Co, Kofusi better known as, perhaps one of the best known YouTubers on uh, YouTube, of course. Now, his average training pace is quite slow, actually, but he was going through that math period for a long time, wasn't he? I think he also does like to run quite early, especially in the winter, it can be quite heavy going. So, and he's also carrying that GoPro uh, on the selfie stick. So, I do wonder whether that slows him down, but he's, he's somebody that sort of definitely likes to run easy quite a lot but certainly can pick up the pace required. And he did a fine 314 in Chicago. And interesting, and you know, he's literally just done a 5KB of 1905. So it just shows that the marathon training and this sort of fairly sort of easy paced, reasonably high mileage approach can work for 5Ks even without really training for it. So you go from running Chicago marathon to running your PB 5K within six days is quite impressive. Now, Terry Booth is another very fascinating one. He used to be a former sort of sub elite runner i would say 29 minute for 10k well i think perhaps you almost call that you know bordering on elite but uh 
for sub elite, I think, should we say. But he had a lot of time out, maybe 20 years, put on a few pounds. He started running about five years ago. And he had this approach where he would done a lot of miles, but very, very slowly. In fact, a lot slower than this average 847 average training pace that he does. But some weeks that he was if on Strava, he was literally covering like 130, 140 miles a week. It was amazing. He was out twice a day, but it was all quite slow. I think he was basically trying to just basically burn off all that excess weight that he'd got. And he's now quite a lean runner and he races an awful lot. He doesn't really do any sessions at all. So this 847 average pace belies the fact that he, in the summer he was really pretty racing twice a week. And he did 16.19 for 5K, which is the fifth fastest track 5,000 this year in the UK. Somewhat quicker than me. My best was only 18, what did I do on the track? 18.30 six i think i did something like that or was 1837 so he was basically lapping me whereas a few years ago i was actually beating him so it just goes to show that if you um you know you dedicate yourself to training and uh you know you had that latent talent there in the first place then you can really uh make some big progress and i think that's model is perhaps something i should be looking at more because I think, you know, the days that I can rack out these really fast training runs, I mean, when I tried to do that in May, it you know, hurt my quad. Um, so Seth James DeBoer, another very, very famous YouTuber, and uh, his recent training mileage has been phenomenal, 140-mile weeks training for New York. Um, he's averaging 86 miles per week um, about the whole of 2021 20 so far, 13 hours. I've also included another stat here, which I haven't really mentioned here, which is the elevation feet per mile. Now, with him, his so this is the for every mile that person runs, on average, he goes up 84 feet. So, if you look at that 84 figure, these are obviously normalised. That's a lot higher than all these other people. So, I think the reason why his average training pace is only 8:55 is partly because he likes to run a lot of easy miles but also a lot of these miles are actually v uphill obviously you're not going to be able to run you know uphill and then some up, up mount literally up mountains so that's why his training pace i think is relatively slow and here's someone that would be doesn't fit this model at all so his marathon i think his pb marathon i put in his 223 from amsterdam in and a, a 5k could find not this year but i think that's probably reflective of what we can do maybe even quicker but you can see that his average training pace is three minutes 26 slower than his marathon pace and a whole four minutes quicker than slower than his 5k piece and we've got another YouTubers here, Emily Heller and Tony James. Average training pace and mileage is pretty similar, around about a nine minute miles. And they're doing around about a four hour marathon. And so again, as a sort of saying, Emily had a bit of a, a hard time in the Chicago marathon. I think she's a lot uh, quicker rather than that. And that 419 was actually from elsewhere. So I look forward to seeing her progress to her next one. But just goes to show that at that level, just purely looking at the stats then it's quite possible that you end up running your marathon slower than your average training pace phil york is my friend and he actually trains relatively slowly at 9 15 you might you might actually joke races quite slowly these days he was a former nationally ranked steeplechaser very fine 9 13 for the steeplechase and uh for many years, I was struggling to even run that faster on a flat 3000, but feels almost 60 now and uh, very impressive. He's still going. He's more of an 815 runner these days, but uh, can still knock out 2014s in the park runs. Ben Notley, we mentioned earlier. Chris Ford, 40 runs. So he trains quite slowly there, barely a, just under a 10 minute mile average pace. So he's, he's actually training philosophy kind of meets more of the approach perhaps by the faster people so his average training pace is actually somewhat slower than his than his marathon pace which um his marathon pace there is more or less just under a nine minute mile and he's training basically at a 10 minute mile i think it's actually his 5k times i think perhaps well you never quite know with him whether he actually uh he doesn't actually race race many races because he all seems to have a large entourage of people around him but I think I think I saw him run a sub six mile uh, one time, so I think that five k perhaps could be closer to twenty minutes if you put his mind to it. 
And Chris Peel is another one that spends most of his time running up the side of mountains and hills. So his uh, average elevation gain there is 77. So it's very high. So that probably explains why his average training pace is only uh, a 10 minute mile. And uh, he had a hard time in Manchester. Clearly wasn't feeling well and unfortunately didn't finish. But uh, I remember last year he was going on the track and trying to break 20 minutes and he eventually did it. I'm not quite sure what his exact time was, but I put down 1959. But I think it reflects the fact that he's doing lots of vertical miles, maybe not training optimally for the marathon. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if he actually targeted that event. I think that 356 could come down to certainly sub 330. I think you just need a bit of luck and uh, obviously to feel well on the day. So good luck for him in his next one. Dan Runs is kind of similar, a person that likes to run uh, on YouTube um, up the side of mountains. I think Victoria, uh, sometimes she goes out with her husband, Stephen, so that's why her vertical is quite um, high and her training pace there. Interestingly, her training pace is uh, when she actually races the marathon, she does speed up considerably. Um, so she fits the model well, there well, so very fine to get under four hours. And uh, as I mentioned, Stephen already, uh, Kelly Kellogg's on the run. All those uh, great videos from her with uh, Matt, the Welsh runner. And her average training pace is around about a 10 minute mile. And over 5k there, you can see that she notably speeds up when she hits the race. I think just um, she had clearly a hard time in Berlin. That was a very hot day. And um, uh, I remember in a video saying she wasn't very well. And that 4.54 actually came a week later in London. So... Um, so I think that 4 hour 54 isn't at all reflective of ability. I think more likely to be around about low 4 hours, maybe even a, a sub 4. So I look forward to seeing her progress towards the next one. And I think she's got an ultimate aim of doing a Boston qualifier. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, rather long, lengthy look at my analysis of this um, these people. I hope you don't mind the people that I've featured been on there. All this data is on Strava, so um, it's all in the public domain. So, uh, well, certainly the YouTubers, I think it's fair game. And it's interesting to see what the elite athletes do. You kind of feel if they didn't want their training analysed by the likes of me, then it wouldn't be on Strava. But, uh, yeah, anyone knows got an issue with that then uh, please message me and i'll uh, look to make sure i don't include you in any future analysis or uh, if you've got any person wants to add any contributions to their own stats and any comments we we'll look forward to hearing you down in the comments so um a bit of a long-winded one and um we we'll look forward to seeing you soon like and subscribe all that. I hope you found it interesting. I need to come up with my phrases. I think I need to get a uh, a bit of a, a tune, don't I? I've recently got a coffee machine, but I'm still working out how to use it. So, um, yeah, footage of me doing coffee and stuff like that may have to come another time. But, uh, yeah, analysis videos perhaps I'm better at. But uh, there we go. All right, then. Right, better sign off. Bye. Daisy. Daisy. Daisy.